Hello and welcome to Mark Fixes Stuff. In this exciting episode, I'm going to be showing you how to flash a GoTech USB emulator to work with a Commodore Amiga. This is the work of Herve Messenger's wonderful firmware and Selector ADF disk image file, which I'll be showing you how to utilize. You will need the GoTech itself. Some wires, we're going to need four here. Um, these ones I have are um, maybe differently configured to what you'd use because as you can see I've got two female here and two female to male here. You'll also need a TTL USB adapter. Now these are available for about £3.50 posted. I would recommend that you get the FTDI variant as they are less pirated than the prolific adapters which don't work with the latest versions of the drivers to uh, combat piracy. I've also got um, a pair of metal tweezers here for setting off the reset between two points but um, you can just use another piece of wire for that. Also uh, one gigabyte uh, stick for your ADF files. Okay, so we'll put that to one side for the moment and have a quick look at the drive. The drive itself is a very simple beast when you open it up. It's a single circuit board and we can see that there's an ARM chip which is a 128K programmable device. Um, just under half of that is used by Herve Messengers or Herve Messinger if I'm saying that right. Um, brilliant firmware. Um, the bit of the drive that we're interested in is this bit at the back. Okay, and to make it easier, I'm going to remove the drive from the case so that you can see what's going on. Um, I actually do remove the drive from the case um, every time I do one of these anyway. I just find it easier to work with. The first thing we need to do is right enable the ARM chip. Now that's done by strapping these two points. And by strapping, I mean creating a link, an electrical link between the two. Now, in order to do this, what I've done is I've taken a few strands of copper wire and I have put them through the hole and I've twisted them around on the back which actually then creates a link between those two points. This board is all insulated so it's quite difficult to um, bridge the wrong connections okay and I've twisted that so it's quite tight so that's the first thing that we need to do. Secondarily we need to take some points off of our TTL connector to go into these points here, which are the RX and TX from the adapter. And these two points here reset the GoTech, and that's something that you will need to do, in my experience. And that just resets the ARM chip and allows it to communicate. We also have a couple of pins here. This one here is the five volt, and we're taking five volts from the TTL adapter. And these two here are ground. You can put the ground onto either of these pins, but it's good practice to put it one pin apart from the five volt. Okay, so let's have a look at the TTL adapter. This is the FTDI adapter. It's a USB to TTL adapter. Um, you can find them easily on eBay for about three pounds each. This one has a mini USB connection, as you can see there, but it just goes into USB. Um, and this will provide everything we need via four particular pins. I've added headers to this one. You don't need to do this. You could just use wires straight into the holes as it's provided. Okay, so looking down the right-hand side, um, there are four things that you need particularly. Just grab my tweezers so I can point them out to you. Okay, so first thing is five volts. Now this one goes to the five volts input on the GoTek USB drive emulator. And there's ground, which goes to the ground power on the uh, USB drive emulator. So that's power dealt with. TXD is transmission of data and RXD is receiving data back from the unit. Okay, so they just literally connect up to those two points which I have showed you on the machine. So let's do that. 
first we'll connect the 5 volts and we'll use brown here and brown onto the pin of the GoTech. Now we'll connect the ground. We we'll use blue there. Okay, and blue onto the power connector of the GoTech. Now we'll connect the TXD, and I think we'll use um, black there and we'll pop it into this part of the array on the GoTech and finally the RXD we'll use the red uh, and into this port on the GoTech great just a quick note about this jumper here. Um, you'll find this in various guises on TTO adapters and it's always labelled up with 3.3 um, or 3V3 which is 3.3 volts or 5 volts and that's saying how much voltage it's going to use to write the chip. It's not how much voltage will go through the 5 volt section here to power the drive, it's how much TTO voltage it will use. Um, if you get this wrong, it doesn't matter so much on the ARM chips because they are 5 volt tolerant, but it should be 3.3 volts. Now this one is a mini USB, and it just goes in as you'd expect. There's a lot of USB type connectors on the market there. Now we can see that that's on because it's lit up. Lovely. Okay, so let's try a flash. First thing that we need to do is to check the devices. So we go to devices and printers, and we'll see appearing in here down the bottom your device. It might be called something different. Now just pop in there and go and check the port settings. Now a lot of devices by default will actually come up as a very slow speed, for example, 9600 board. And we're just going to leave it as that. Sometimes, uh, depending on the drivers, you can't actually change that without being in app in mode. So next we're going to go start and go flash loader demo which you would have installed and we're going to pick the COM port that we had and we're going to go to 9600 board. All the rest of these bits can stay as they are. Okay so everything can stay as the default. Now this is where it all goes wrong because you click next and nothing happens. Nothing can't move it, you can't shake it, nothing. It's completely gone to sleep. And what's happening is it can't actually talk to the GoTech bootloader. And that's because we haven't reset the GoTech device. And it's what throws a lot of people. So the trick is to hold the pins across the reset pins, count to three, let go. Now do it again. Hold it across, go one, two, three, let go and now we should be able to talk to the device so we're going click next it's saying warning when you click remove protection the flash will be mass erased and data will be lost it's because it's read protected so you can't read the code off the original device it says device will reset and now the target's readable which means it's blank and you can read it's got a flash size of 128 kilobytes so we go next and it's shown it's selected the connectivity line 128k device which is correct and down here it's showing us all the writable banks within that ARM device all the way down to the bottom okay so we click next and click download to device now I've got the folder down here Cortex Amiga which I've downloaded from her messengers uh, site and let me just show you how we do that so I've already extracted this Let's have a quick look inside that folder. If we look in the firmware folder, we can see there's this .hex file. Okay, and it's important to realize that's on the desktop in Cortex Amiga floppy emulator folder, firmware folder. Okay, so next we're going to, here we go, we're going to go download from a file, click the browse button. We're going to go onto the desktop, scroll down, and select Cortex Amiga floppy emulator. Now we're going to go into firmware, but oh, where is it? It's not there. 
Well, it's because we're looking for an S19 um, standard file name, which is ST Microelectronics. We're going to switch that to hex, and now we can see the hex file that we need. Highlight that and go open. Now, some of the bits that we need to highlight here, erase necessary pages, um, just verify after download is all we need from the default. Um, we don't want to upload or enable flash protection or anything like that. We just want to click next. So it's downloading data, which actually means it's downloading data to the ARM device. And as you can see here, the lights are flashing. I'll turn the lights out there so you can see them. Okay, now this would be a lot faster if I had it on a higher board rate, but um, I prefer it to go slower and be more reliable, to be honest. Um, I've not had anything actually time out on me so far, but I do like the idea that it's writing at a reasonable speed rather than going hell for leather. Just speeding up the rest of the process so you don't have to sit and watch the write and verify um, because that would be rather boring and pointless and your time is as valuable as mine. Well, probably more so. Hooray! Download operation is completed successfully. That means that your GoTech is actually flashed to work with Amiga now. All that remains to be done is to copy selector.adf from the archive you downloaded onto the root of your memory stick, along with some ADFs of games or utilities, which are, of course need to be legal. Then you'll be able to install the unit in your Amiga by replacing the floppy drive. Just a quick thing to mention, uh, S1 jumper needs to be moved to S0 position to replace DF0, which is the Amiga internal floppy drive. Otherwise it will come up as DF1, um, which is handy if you want to use it as an external drive. Another thing to note is when you put it into your Amiga, the red stripe on the floppy cable needs to go to pin 1, and that P1 denotes pin 1. Otherwise it won't work. Remove the power cables. We can take those um, jumpers out now. And don't forget to remove the shunt. I've made a right mess of that, as you can see. Make sure I get rid of that. Yep, come on. Oh, there's another little bit there. So we get rid of that. Other than that, all you're really doing is popping this into the Amiga, putting your USB stick in, and um, letting it boot, and taking it from there. Using the menu is quite easy. I intend to do a usage video, but that means setting up the capture card. And quite frankly, I'm feeling quite lazy after shooting this video. So for now, this is Mark from Mark Fixes Stuff signing out and saying subscribe to get your fix. Hope to see you again in another video. Bye.